right, panel. Are the blindfolds all in place? Uh-huh. Yeah, sir. Yes. In that event, uh, will our first challenger come in and sign in, please? Do you know how we keep score on this program? If you know how we keep score, there's one little chore to be done. That is to let the audience here in the theater and the folks who are at home know exactly what your line is. All right, panel, as does not need to be said, really, you know there is an area of identification which has required us to ask you to put your blindfolds on. It can cover almost uh, any area that would be helpful to you in terms of what you could see if you didn't have the blindfolds on. We do want to be helpful, and so uh, we'll start the general questioning with uh, Arlene Francis. Would we recognize you from a story or a picture that may have been in the newspapers in the last week? Perhaps. Uh, would it be on pages other than the entertainment page of the newspapers? Perhaps. Perhaps, that's dubious. No, we'll, we'll give you a yes on that one. Yes? With your permission, yes. Sir. Uh, mm. Have you been associated with anything that is newsworthy from a standpoint of um, the Army, the Navy, or the Marines? No. One down and nine to go. Jim mentioned it. Uh, I take it that in your normal uh, course of duty, you do not wear a uniform. Correct. Uh, therefore, we would uh, recognize you because of the fact that uh, you are generally newsworthy? I think that's a fair description, Jim, yeah. Uh, do you have a proficiency in the uh, manly performance of sports? No. Two down and eight to go, Miss Kilgallen. Uh, do you ever do what you do in any kind of a vehicle? Well, now, do you mean specifically do what he does while in a vehicle? Or while getting out of it? While no. getting out of it. No, no, that's three down. No. <laughs> three down and seven to go, Mr. Sir. As I understand it, we are now able to eliminate the world of sports and the world of entertainment. Is that correct? That, I think, is a good assumption. Yes. Uh, might your fame have uh, stemmed from some kind of political activity? No. Four down and six to go, Arlene Francis. You are not uh, a gentleman who recently was released from a balloon. No. <laughs> Five dollars, five to go, Jim. No, 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 I got a yes. I, that was a... You are... That's right, you did. You got a I yes. Did, Two I? negatives make an affirmative or something. Uh -huh. That's right. Um, have you done something that has to do with a non-profit-making organization? Yes. Uh, the non-profit organization, however, has nothing to do with the defense or the armed services. Yes, it has no. not. No. Yes, it has not. No, yes. Yes, it has not. No, yes. Goody. Um, what has he done? Uh, do you have anything to do with public events? No. <laughs> I don't know what that is. But <laughs> <laughs> five down and five to go, Jim Mitchell. I take it that I could not uh, probably do what you have done. Uh, considering uh, your equipment as we know it, we would have to guess that that is right, that you could not. Um, I take it that people do not pay to see you do what you have done. People do not pay to see you do what you have done. That is a correct assumption. Uh, you are not uh, involved in the world of business. No. Um, Non-profit. Non yes. Go ahead, Joe. Uh, yes. Uh, do you um, get paid for what you have done? Yes. Uh, does the public pay you for this? Yes. Um, they pay an admission? No. No. 
Now, that's six down and four to go, and that is a question I wouldn't dwell on too much because it, it's uh, somewhat tenuous in, in the explanation of it. Miss Kilgallen. Uh, is what you are famous for uh, a continuing thing rather than one specific event in your life? Yes. Uh, in other words, it is your particular fame in your particular profession that we're trying to guess. Yes. And you do not wear a uniform. No. Or any special garb. No. Well, now, just one, one, one small agreement here. I think that uh, you would agree that there are circumstances uh, under which we might describe you as wearing special garb, not ordinary um, street clothes. Right? All right. Yeah. Uh, can you do your work uh, uh, both in the daytime and the nighttime? Yes. Do you address large numbers of people in the course of your work? Yes. Uh, are they better off because of what you tell them? Yes. Are you connected with any religious organization? No. Seven down and three to go, Mr. Sir. Are you at all connected with any of the arts? No. Eight down and two to go, Miss Francis. Is there a degree uh, attached to your name. By that I mean, I, could you be a doctor or a dentist or some such lawyer? Yes. Have you, in the course of your work, uh, helped peoples of other countries than your own? Yes. You're not going to believe this, but I bet I know who this is. Uh, are you a man that has worked, who has been here in America, uh, in the hope of raising funds to continue his work on foreign soil. Yes. Are you a man by the name of Dr. Dooley? Yes. yes. <laughs> I have read about you, I have seen you appear, and I think that the work you do is wonderfully important, and I'm delighted that I'm the one that got you. <laughs> Thank you, Ms. And I'd like to make that quite permanent. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> I might say this. Uh, speaking for the rest of the panel, may I say we're delighted, too? <laughs> <laughs> I might say this of, of Dr. Tom. I had the great honor of working with him in a documentary. I became very familiar with his work in Laos and earlier in Vietnam. But I think it's a story the American people have come progressively to know more about. His personal story is, I think, as exciting and as splendid as his professional story, because he was out in Wang Sing in northern Laos, 16 miles from the Chinese border, where they are currently having, as you know, uh, aggressions out of uh, northern Viet Minh into his uh, old area. And he came up with a little thing called a melanoma, a cancer in the chest, malignant melanoma. He came home, had an operation been very busy raising money to go back to Laos. And if you ask Dr. Tom how he's going to make out with his cancer operation, he says if he can get through the New York traffic, okay, he's got a 50-50 chance. I'm going back in three weeks. I'm going back to Laos. You're going back to Laos in to three rest. weeks. Tom, I've got uh, a little surprise here that I hope pleasures you mightily. I serve with much pleasure as a member of the Damon Runyon Fund. And here's a check for $5,000 made out to Medico Incorporated. Thank you very much. Now, I will say this. I think you all know the fund. It's administered and gloriously by uh, Dan Parker of the Mirror, and Arthur Godfrey, uh, Mr. Winchell, Walter Winchell. It's given away something in excess of $13 million in grants since it was founded, but I don't think that any grant ever made has given as much pleasure as this one that goes to Dr. Tom Dooley tonight. Tom, anything else we can do to help you? Yes. Everybody listening can uh, help it just like the Damon Runyon Fund did, and I just happen to have a few seconds that I'm allowed to give my address. If anybody listening, or if Ms. Francis, Mr. Mitchell, or Ms. Kilgallen, and Mr. Cerf, who is not my publisher, would like to help. Our address is simply Medico, Box 2, Times Square, New York. I repeat, Medico, Box <laughs> 2, Times Square, New York. And thank you, Ms. Francis, and thank you. Tom, it's wonderful to have you.
Actually, Tom is so determined to make Medico economically viable that those of us who know him well have come, got, come to call him Box 2 now. We don't call him Dr. Dooley anymore. All right, panel, let's see what we can do with the second challenger. Would you 